bring it up. Talk she. Recorded live. God, I hate that. Oh, my God, I hate that. I'll tell you, it's so cheesy. So cheesy. <clears throat> But, you know, it's just what you have to get used to when you're in the broadcasting business. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on with my co-host, Glenn Suffin. How you doing, buddy? Well, doing okay today. Uh, I've had a headache, and but like I said, what else is new about that? Yeah, yeah, me too. Same same old shit, different day. I'm getting so used Pretty to much. these headaches. Yeah, I'm just getting used to them. I'm, they're becoming a part of my uh, repertoire, I guess you might say. I've got plenty of oxycodone laying around here and all kinds of stuff, and I don't take it because uh, I don't like to take pain medication. But every now and then I'll pop a uh, uh, whatever they're called. Uh, what are those? What are those pills called? I take uh, no, the other ones. I'm getting free fill tomorrow. Oxycodone, yeah, the magic right. pill. Oxycodone. Everybody's addicted to oxycodone here in the Northwest, everybody but me. I can't stand this stuff, but uh, I've just never been a pill seeker. Uh, we have a lot of pill seekers here in the Northwest, and I'm sure you all do wherever you are too, Glenn. Yeah, they, they're all over the place. Everybody wants pills. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I don't want them. I, I know what they do. Yeah, they, I've had some that made me hallucinate so bad I didn't even know what planet I was on. And they go, oh, you got to keep taking them. No, I don't. <laughs> you know, if they're messing me up, you don't have to keep taking them. Yeah, well, the latest thing in the news, uh, transgender dogs and cats. I want to tell you something, people. I am getting so sick and tired of this shit, I could throw up. I don't care if you hang up. I don't care if you change channels. I don't care if you get pissed off. File a complaint. File a report. I'm sick and tired of transgender dogs and cats having sex changes. I'm sick and tired of hearing about 100 genders now. Sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of it. 100 genders? Give me a break. Dogs and cats having sex change operations? Give me a break. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when, where is there 100 genders? I mean, people are going, oh, I identify as chocolate ice cream, so you got to treat them like that. It's, it's mental illness. It's not. I can see maybe three genders: male, female, and trans. And that's yeah. it. That's all you need. That's you don't need. Yeah. You know, and I say to. trans because there are people that you know don't that have an, a double X Y chromosome. So yeah, there is some anomalies there, but there aren't a hundred different genders is what i feel like well if i feel like a martian i'm not a martian you know it, it's ridiculous well here we are glenn right in the middle of it yeah. it's happening yep. it's happening a hundred genders i mean it was 75 now it's gone up to 100 yeah. it's actually writing uh putting it in the dsm it's going to be in the next dsm and um they're actually writing a book on it, and uh, they're going to be putting that book out so everyone will know. Uh, you'll have to memorize your genders now. If you're in the corporate world, you'll have to memorize your genders, my ass. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah, having to memorize 100 genders? Well, now they're telling kids that men can menstruate. You know, it's sure. like men have periods. It's like, no, they don't. It, of course. That, yeah. Where does it come out of their ass? You know, and if you're bleeding out your ass, you need you need help. You know, I'm sorry. I mean, it, it's because it's you the way they dumb down the people. You need to go to the doctor, optometrist, or yeah. something. Colonoscopy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're bleeding out your butt, there's a problem. You know, especially if you're male. You know, it's a yeah, there's just some things that they're you just have to say, what the fuck. They're feminizing our boys, and that's that's another thing that I'm really against, and if, we'll get a lot of flack for this, of course, but uh, they're feminizing our boys. And, oh, yeah, well, they're also doing it with the plastics that they're using the you know, and the chemicals that are coming out, the estrogen-based chemicals that they're putting in everything. To the chemtrails hyper- or what? Too. Yeah, chemtrails. You know, the food, the, food, water. the water. It, 
is like they're just poisoning the planet and going, oh, it's okay, it's for your good. It ain't for anybody's good. You do have to ask the question, though, why? You do have to ask the question, why? It's a good question. It's a good question. Why? Well, you know, why is this happening? It's a good question. Um, so. They said it in Agenda 21. They're trying to control the planet, control the population, and get us all under world rule with one government. And the way to do that is dumb down the people, chemically mess them up, turn them into zombies, and then you can control them. They are working on a plan by 2025 to have every square inch of the planet under video surveillance. Yep. I could not believe what all I read and studied and researched. I could not believe the plan. They're even putting these cameras in the woods. They're even putting these cameras in the forest. They're putting these towers in the rural areas where they can watch the wildlife. Uh huh. Yeah, watch the wildlife. All of these, well, all of these towers are full of radiation, chock oh, full yeah. of radiation, like your smart well, also meter. For mind control. Yes, and for mind control and radiation poisoning. And your DNA structure is all mutated and messed up. And, of course, the smart meters on your house put out a 47-foot, uh, what is it, uh, perimeter, uh, circumferential perimeter around the smart meter, which part of that circumferential goes inside the house and part of it goes outside the house. So that's damaging. Um, and as close as the houses are together, they they basically got most of the area covered with these smart yeah. meters. And, yeah. And, and taking, they, taking yours off of the house doesn't – it might help a little, but you're still getting your radiation from all the other ones around you. So you yeah. have to have the whole community decide that they don't want the smart meters. I yeah. mean, I can hear mine buzzing constantly. It, it sends out like a Morse code, and um, it yeah. sends out – Stuff that sounds like a modem at times, and I can hear it in my head. And you can see it in the light bulbs and stuff where it's flickering, and the they can control your computers and everything. I mean, if anything that's anything that has a microchip in it is surveilled. So when they say, you know, uh, what's her name said that the microwaves have cameras, they don't really have cameras, but they do spy on you. They can monitor you like your refrigerator your toaster anything smart can be controlled by the smart meter and, and they're also putting like, in these uh they're also putting in these led lights on the streets yeah. they're calling them smart streets yeah. and they're going to play they're going to play soothing music but they can also hear you at a whisper they can, at a whisper they can when monitor you and they they yeah. can pinpoint where gunshots are coming from. I mean, it's so it's like, oh, it's for our safety. No, it's not. They're spying on us like crazy and collecting all the information. And it's not for anything for us. If it was for us, you know, they they wouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. Anything that is for us, they don't do. Against us, they constantly do. The only thing I can figure out that they're trying to do with all of this is to set up a system where when people start rebelling or people start running away, people start waking up, there will be nowhere to hide. It'll be like one of those sci-fi movies. There will be nowhere to go. There will be nowhere to hide. There will be nowhere to have a conversation. You'll be trapped. You'll be caught no matter what. And brought back into the foe. I mean, that's the only thing that I can think of that they would want to surveil every square inch of the damn planet, uh, yeah. besides out in the ocean. And hell, they might even be able to do that via satellite. So, I mean, that's well, the only or reason. Put could... buoys. Or put buoys out in the, you know. Yeah. They, they have all this technology in the spy satellites and all this stuff. And it's been going on since 
I, I know since at least the 60s. And from did when I was get, born, I've been on. Did you get that last post you put up about NASA? Was that And that wasn't from The Onion. That was not from The Onion. That was from a, another news source that uh, NASA came out and made the statement that they'd been talking to the Greys and four other races from the Galactic and that they yeah. were mining the dark side of the moon and Jupiter and that the Greys have been visiting the planet for thousands of years. Uh, uh, I, I think I saw that. I mean, if this is true... This is going to change history as we know it. Are we so dumbed down that we missed something here? Or is that from the onion that I didn't miss something? I, I don't know. That couldn't be from the onion because I, I read the. Well, I've heard it. I've heard it from reliable sources that they've been in contact with aliens. Uh, I have a friend that I will probably try to get on because he's been into the uh, the dumbs and he was a truck driver out in the Midwest and stuff and. He claims he saw one of these aliens. You know, I, 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 I personally think the aliens are here. I mean, you know, why think we're the only life in the universe? You know, there's got to be. You know, they went to Mars and they find microbes on Mars, so there's life everywhere, and the proteins are floating out in space. And right, right, right. You spores, know, spores. Yeah, yeah the spores yeah. and stuff and they find they mm -hmm. found this huge gas cloud that's like beer basically out there so who's mm -hmm. to say that there aren't mm -hmm. races everywhere and that they are here but I think what it is is for total control of the planet and once they get control of well, the whole planet then they're going to start their real agenda as I get older I learned that we have a state and then we have a dark state and then we have a darker state, and then we have an even darker state, and now I'm learning we have an even darker state. So, you know, just recently, over the last few weeks, I'm learning we have a fifth-level dark state, which puts it way, 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 way up there beyond top secret. And so... You know, this is the kind of stuff that you and I can only speculate about in our wildest imagination, but it's probably true to some degree. Whatever we could wildly speculate is probably has a grain of truth to it. Um, because when you get that top, 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 top secret, oh my God, what the hell is going on there, you know? I mean, when Google comes out with this new computer that can compute a gazillion bits of information per second, I mean, Jesus Christ, what's on the horizon next? You know, they're yeah. putting skin on robots now. They're putting human skin. They're they're grafting skin onto robots. I mean, they say Wait a minute. 20, Wasn't there a movie? Huh? It was called Terminator? Terminator. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know... It, yeah. So it's just they were predicting this. Well, not really predicting it because everybody writes a lot of this stuff. You find out later they they know about it and they're trying to put it out there. And it's to tell people, but it's also to condition us to accept it as normal. Of and, course. Oh, well, you know, it's normal now. It, it wasn't normal back in the 80s. I mean, I was watching TV programs about what was coming. And here I am in 2017 looking at the same robots that I saw in the 80s, and they go, this is brand new. It's like, no, it's not. You've had them since the 80s. You just keep pulling out the same one, saying, right. oh, this is the new. And it's like, it's not new. They're way ahead. And, you know, look, at, uh, being like me, I was, you know, have all these top secret, well, not top secret because they've been just declassified, but I, I read all this stuff, and it's like mind-blowing. And then you tell people, and they go, Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Ha, 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 and laugh at you. And then a couple of years later, it comes out in the news, and they go, well, it's normal. Right, but you right. told us about it before, so you're a freak. And it's like, no, yeah. I'm just well-informed. Yeah. What about the head transplants that Russia's been working on for years and years and years, and that's not coming out? That's kind of dropped yeah. away from the alternative media, even the head transplants. They've been doing that yeah, for Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I remember when they did that to uh, – a, 
a dog and a monkey, and that was back, I think, in the eighties. Yeah, and you know they they're, they're, they're and, and you know they're transplanting those damn heads like like we use toilet paper. I mean, come on, give me a Pretty break. Much. If I'm a mad scientist, that's the first fucking thing I'm going to do is trans run out and find a head to transplant. You yeah. know what I mean? See if you can do it so that when your time comes, you can have yours transplanted on another body that's younger and continue to live, you know, search for Im- of or immortality. Of course. I mean, of course. I walked out of range there for a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean they they've been doing all kinds of experiments, and then you find out about it, and then and then they go, okay, well we'll put it on the onion so that people, oh well it's the onion that uh, so it's not a legit, and it's like no, it's totally legit. They just make it so it seems fanciful, and you know, oh we can't believe it because it was on a satire site, and. And I find that some of this satire isn't really satire. It's people trying to say, hey, this is going on. But the only platform you can use is a satire site to get it out. Well, all I can say is everything we're saying has a grain of truth to it. And uh, if we really knew what was going on, we would both be blown out of our chairs backwards, literally backwards out of the chair. As much as we know, as much as we think we know, and as desensitized as we think we are to all of this, we would be blown literally out of the chair backwards if we knew what was really going on right now. Because you don't see it when you're driving down a street. You don't see it when you're going to Kmart, Walmart. You don't see it when you're taking a drive to your doctor. You don't think about it. But it's going on. It's going on in the universities. It's going on in the multi-billion dollar corporations. It's going on at Lockheed Martin. It's going on at NASA. It's going on at Quantico. It's going on. And um, they're getting closer and closer and closer to something that might resemble martial law might trigger martial law. Of course, we've been under soft martial law for a long time. Yeah. I was about to say, we've been under soft martial law, and I'm just waiting for it to go hot. You know, it's And they keep in, incrementing it and incrementing it and getting back to the aliens. I think what they're trying to do is like Project Blue Bean, and they're, they're trying to make everybody realize now, well, there might be aliens, and then all of a sudden we have an alien attack, and oh, my God, this is real. we got to stand behind the government, and the government will protect us when it's a false flag and the government pulled it on us. And, and when it's that they have all laser, this- nothing but laser beams in the sky, and everybody's running for cover, and yeah, nobody's... Yeah, well, holograms, they can pro- to- project holograms up in the well, yeah, air. Of course, and, of course. You know, and it's like... And also... You know, everybody everybody says, well, the Earth is flat and we can't go into space. Then why do we have space treaties in the 60s? Why were, you know, we they were talking about space fleets in the 60s, and then all of a sudden it became, well, don't worry about it. You, it can't happen. And then the PSYOP starts about the flat, flat Earth. And then it's like, eh, you know, I, I don't believe the Earth is flat, you know. No, And no, besides no, which, no. It, it has mountains and hills and stuff, so it's not flat, you know. Well, no, the Earth's No matter flat. what you say. The Earth is spherical. And it, yeah, and if the Earth was flat, it's the only one in the freaking universe that's flat. And if it's flat, what's on the bottom of the thing? You know, right. what, what's on right. the bottom? Uh, and And why can't you see Polaris, the North Star, from Australia? But you can see the South Star from Australia that you can't right. see from North America. And right. they can't explain to well, a telescope. They're too far away, and the telescopes can't see it. It's no, like that is so goddamn that. stupid. You can see all of that yeah. with a kid's telescope. Yeah. Uh, these people that are saying this never looked through a telescope and looked out into space and mm-hmm. seen what's out there. And they right. just believe what their friends tell them and the peer pressure. And, well, if you don't believe the Earth is flat, ha, 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 we're going back before Columbus. <laughs> it's They're just trying to dumb down the population so much that idiocracy was a documentary. You know? well, how, it became, how dumb? 
How dumbed down do you think we've become? I don't know. I mean, I look at some people and I think they're woke. And then I look at others that are awake and even them, they're starting to fall off and go back to the. So I think that I don't know how dumbed down we are, but I know that we are very dumbed down because when I was in school, all this stuff now is like, oh, that's not, a, you know, that 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 doesn't apply anymore these new rules apply to totally go against a lot of the stuff i was taught and it's it's mind-blowing i mean well, things, do, send your kid to school. things do change every once in a while i mean yeah, uh, well to okay I, I can see change and stuff but when they change to you know water's not wet <laughs> come on you yeah, know, you, you yeah, go yeah. Well, you go so water's far. Not wet. Scientifically, water is not wet. I mean, when you break it down to the basic science, water is not yeah. wet. But I understand your point. I understand the point you're trying to make. I'm just saying we're making new discoveries by the second now, not by the year or by the five years or yeah. by the 50 years. We're making new discoveries by the second that are mind-boggling, literally mind-boggling. We've learned more in the last hundred years than we have in all of history, human history, as far as we're concerned. Now, when you add these grays into it and these alien species into it and these other dimensions and wormholes and things into it and aliens visiting the planet, I'm sure that we have no idea what we've really learned. That's where that's when we go to that, that high, 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 top secret level. And I'm wondering, I'll tell you a good question for radio so how do you keep a secret because you know there's a lot of whistleblowers at the lower level and you know as you rise in the levels of secrecy you know that people start dying really quick and getting murdered really quick and then just vanishing so i guess that's the way they keep it a secret that you're yeah. you're going to die if you even breathe anything they've got you wired they've got your brain wired you're going to die if you breathe anything. Well, these uh, my, these uh, implants that they're putting in people, the chips, uh, they contain, you know, they can push a button and kill you. Yeah. You know, and you're dead. And yeah. people, oh, well, we got to get these because our work says so. And then it is, well, no, sure. it's another form of control. Well, I'm sure that's I necessary, mean, though. I'm sure that's necessary for the type of information that they hold on to. I'm yeah, sure it's well, to answer necessary. your question, how do you keep a secret? Don't tell it. I mean, right. that's the only way is if you know something and you tell nobody, it's a secret. But if right. you know something, you tell one person, it is secret. no longer a secret. Yeah. 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 Dead men keep secrets. Alive people, they don't keep secrets too well. Right. Right. Facebook is really doing its share of censoring us this week more than they oh, ever yeah. have before. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I just was on a little bit before we went on air, and I shared something, and somebody says, I don't see the link. And then they had to shut down their browser and restart, and then, oh, oh, there it is. So they yeah, do the all kinds problem. of stuff to me. I had the same yeah. problem today with the browser situation. They they lock my page up. They put it where unresponsive. You you only get the top of the page and nothing else. And, and you know, I got I got screen captures of that from my friend who sent it to me. And it's like, yeah, they do this to me constantly ever since this. I've had this account. They've been doing it. Yeah. So, but that's also because I I got them in the newspaper and I actually got to talk to Fred Willens and then he got fired. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because, mm -hmm. oh, you got through to somebody. Yep, they're gone. Yeah. If you find somebody, you get through to them, uh, they don't stay too long. So, well, we're, because we're that's how they make you ineffective. You know, if yeah. you get through one time and they fire that person, you have to go all through this whole thing again to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. And and each time you come up against somebody, they whack you off, whack them off, and you lose your contact. So, and yeah. everybody gets more and more scared as you whack them off. Everybody right. gets more and more scared and further and further away from you, so they don't talk to you anymore. Correct. I mean, that, well, that's a good way to keep a secret too. You know, you 
you control what goes out and who they contact. And I mean, you notice you can't find a Fed book phone number. I have one email that I use, but that's the press email. And and I I know they read all my stuff because I'm one of the ones that they they put a survey up. How do you think FedBook is? Take the survey. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, everybody. All right, I don't want to bother with that. You do it. Tell them what they tell them what you think. Yeah, I may not do I any mean, good, but tell them anyway. Yeah, but tell them anyway. At least it's you have and screen capture it so record. you know, so you have a public record of what happened. That's why I post. I mean, I. I, I post on stuff and I screen capture it and people, why do you do that? So you can see what I did and what I said to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is what the way I talk to them. And I don't, I don't take any crap from them, but they kicked me off their platform quite frequently. So. Well, I know what it feels like to be completely banished and it's not a good feeling. Uh, even though, uh, Facebook is not my life. It's still not a good feeling to be com- wake up one morning and completely be banished from your page. That is not a good feeling at all. When you've put in so much work and you've done so much research and you're connected to so many people and you've got so many projects and missions and programs going on, to wake up one morning and see your page it's blank it's is not a good feeling. It's, and it can, and they only stop you from accessing it. They still have it on record and oh, they will use they it against you in a court of law well, of and it not give you a copy that you're supposed to have by law. Now, However, it, that's why everyone needs to download their Facebook history on hard copy, which is what I do. Oh, yeah. I recommend, I recommend highly Always. everyone to download their Facebook history at least once every six months. Oh yeah, go to that zip file and get that zip file. I mean, I'm not allowed yeah. to have my last two, my last two previous profiles on there. They've got the zip file. I won't give it to me. I'm, I've asked them quite frequently. Uh, give me mm-hmm. my zip file for them to. No, we can't do. It. But yet you'll take it to court and use it against me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have no copy of the last two ones. I have previous copies of it but i don't have the final copy and it's like you know and, and you can't then you have no proof you're in court going dot 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 and they come up with this stuff and it's like huh <laughs> you know i, I have I'm, no copy of it but you bring all the stuff up i think i'm very safe when it comes to going to court i watch myself very very much i've watched myself ever since i've been on facebook i'm very cautious very careful what I post and how I post and what I say and how I say it and who I say it to. And, um, I've been very, very careful. Um, born that way, born careful. I was born careful. I never attack anyone like the president. I never attack, uh, senators or house of representative members or judicial (laughs) members. I never threatened to kill anyone or hang anyone or burn anyone at the stake or cut anyone's balls off or, you know, I never, 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 ever make any kind of threats toward anyone like that. And um, that'll keep you safe if you if you do that. Don't threaten anyone. That's what gets people in trouble where you have the law enforcement knocking on your door is when you threaten someone. And they do knock on your door, and they will come to your house, and they will drag you out of the house. I've seen it happen over and over and over and over and over again. And uh, people say, "Oh no, they won't. They won't do that." Yeah, they will, and they are, and they they they're going to continue, and it's going to get worse. Um, you know, somebody said today that they'd taken the share button off of uh, pro Trump uh, posts. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true or not. We'll see later. We'll see. I have seen some of them that have no share button, um, and I know for. When I post some stuff on my wall the next day, I go back and it isn't there. So they can control all that. And they take all my likes off my stuff. I mean, I I always like everything I post, and then I go back a couple hours later, and they're all unliked. Mine are, too. Mine are, too. Mine are, too. I don't understand. I tell you, it really, really pisses me off whenever I go and I spend a whole day liking 
people's post, and then I go back that afternoon trolling around looking and thinking, and all of my likes has been unliked. I, you know, and I'm like, how in the hell did this happen, you know? Because uh, they have access to the servers and can wipe the servers and do whatever. Or other times they'll switch servers because my friend who died, they deleted his page. The, the family did. A couple months later, a whole conversation came up that me and him had because it was oh. on a different server. And oh, yeah. they hadn't wiped that server. And I, I trust me, I copied that thing. It was like, oh, I got to copy this because it just popped up. Yeah. And it disappeared again. And I had, you know, it's never to be seen again. It was like fortunate that a mess up, you know, and, and they also like, you know, URL changes too, because you got to watch it because sometimes it goes to a different server and it'll be instead of www, it'll be like www2 or www3 or some other variation of that, you know, and it's like, oh, we must be on a different server right now. You know, I was looking so at all kinds of all kinds of ways to do stuff. <laughs> I was looking at this Fukushima thing again today, and it's uh, it's much much worse than I thought. All the way from California, oh, that place is horrendous. All the way to the Bering Sea, to Russia, all the way around. Fish are dying by the it's, millions. By the millions, seabirds are dying. Yeah. Seabirds are dying by the hundreds of thousands coming in, starving to death, dying. Well, the starfish are melting and yeah. being deformed, and not you know, it's like. And even sharks are getting cancer and tumors mm. and all this. And it's like, well, sharks don't get cancer, mm-hmm. but they do now, you know. Mm-hmm. And they and and it's the Pacific Ocean is basically dead right now. But then everybody, oh, well, don't worry. But it bleeds into the Atlantic Oceans. All the oceans feed into each other. Of course, so this of course, stuff is of course. being carried around the world. That's what and, I said the other night you know, on the show. That's what I said last night on the show. Uh, people say, oh, it's contained. It's contained. No, it's not contained at all. And it, um, when you look at all the pollution situation, uh, environmental pollution, you look at chemtrails, you look at the uh, things that we don't know about that are going on, you look at the radiation from these towers that are going on, you look at fluoride, you look at pharmaceuticals, big pharma, what they're doing, you look at the groundwater that's being polluted from agriculture, uh, pesticides, uh, Roundup, and nuclear plants. You look at nuclear GMOs, power and nuclear power plants, and you look at fracking, and you look at all these other things, and you start adding them up. It'll make you want to go take a Prozac. It'll make right. you just literally want to leave the planet. I mean, I'm ready to leave the planet right now. Uh, yeah, I wish people, there was a planet B. People don't realize how fucked up all this stuff is, Glenn. They don't. They don't realize, man. They're, you know that's that's why you and I sound crazy. That's why you and I sound like pessimists, just pure pessimists, because people just don't understand what kind of shit we're sitting in here, man. Yeah, well, my pessimism comes from what I learned. I mean, you know, every the little I, I say little bit, but it's actually a lot of stuff. But the little I know of what's going on is like holy. crap. Crap, and there, and I know that there's more that I don't know that's even worse. So yeah, yeah, that's where my worse. pessimism comes from thousand, because I, I don't have thousand. any faith. I always say ten thousand times worse. Can you imagine yeah. if what you think you know is ten thousand times worse? What are you going to think now? You know, and that's pretty oh, yeah. stark. That's pretty. And startling. that's another reason I think that people don't want to take a look is because they don't want to be. They don't want to think about that. They don't want to have that in their mind because they'd rather think it's all hunky dory and the world's a nice place. And yeah, you know, I can see that point. Yeah, I want to be that way, but I can't be that way knowing what I know. Yeah, and people had rather just put it out of their mind because they feel like they can't do anything about it. And guess what? They can't. Yeah. <sighs> We're just going to have to ride this thing out, and um, we're going to have to deal with it as it comes up, and it's not going to be fun. 
I don't think we're really into the shit yet. <laughs> no, this is uh, the beginning of it, and, and you know, and if this is the beginning and it's this bad, it's going to get a lot worse, and people don't realize that. Or well, some people do and say, well, I'd rather hide from it. You're not going to hide from it. It's going to hit you eventually. Oh, yeah, it's going to be. And then you're going to have to deal with it. And how do you deal with it is what counts, not, you know. Yeah, not hiding. The only way to hide is go up in a cave, uh, in the mountains, in a cave, and barricade the front entrance and just live there forever. And even then, they'll find you. So. You know something else. Uh, something else is uh, what was I going to say? People, people just have cognitive dissonance. You know, they don't, they don't. There's nothing they can do. They're totally disempowered to do anything about this. And if the shit, we haven't even talked about the economic situation. We haven't even talked about the collapse, uh, the economic collapse, the fiat currency collapse. We haven't even talked about the devaluation of the dollar. We haven't even oh, yeah. talked about world currency devaluation, uh, the trade off for the petrodollar. I mean, people, boy, here we are. See, we're pessimists. We're pessimists. Here I am adding a whole new section onto this thing. Uh, when this bubble burst, you know, it's going to be a depression. Look at the interest rates. Look what's going on with well, the interest rates. Look at them raising the about... debt ceiling, raising the debt ceiling. How many times can you raise the debt ceiling? Well, they're talking about this year is the, you know, the economic collapse might come as early as the summer. Well, so. it's already started. March. It's already started. March. It's already started. And uh, it's going to start spiraling out of control if they don't do something at the Fed. I don't know what the Fed's got in mind. Um, I don't know what the economists have in mind. I don't know what the president has in mind. I don't know if they've got – surely they've got one of their top secret teams working on this, obviously, oh, yeah. because if it collapses completely and they don't hold it up on crutches, it's going to create martial law. All the stores will close. There won't be any pharmacies open. There won't be any trucks running. There won't be any gasoline for cars. Or if there, if there is, it'll be $40 a gallon. And so, you know, it's going to be a very dangerous situation. Preppers need to be prepping. If you're a prepper, you need to be prepping. And if you haven't prepped already, well, you're fucked. You need to be prepping. Pretty much. Pretty much, um, yeah. And I think that's what they're doing is because, uh, you know, and then blame it on Trump. Yeah. Well, Trump did Trump. it. Yeah. 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 That's the way to, you know, put Trump in and then blame him for the economic collapse impeach him or whatever and i dare say maybe even assassinate him and then put in somebody that brings in the martial the hard martial law and puts us all under the government control and i think honestly that's what they're trying to do so what is this about europe wanting to become its own country with a nuclear arsenal what the hell is going on with this nuclear arsenal in europe I mean, my God, um, I, don't, I don't even know where to start with that one. You know, the Brexit started it all, and now Europe wants its own nuclear arsenal. I don't think I don't think Europe needs its own nuclear arsenal. Do you? No, I don't think any of us need the nuclear arsenal. Really, I mean, I don't. it was a deterrent in the late '60s, '70s to. You know, mutual assured mutual destruction kept us all in line, and then everybody started getting them. And there are some nations that don't care; they just push the button, and they don't need the these atomic weapons to do that. But we have them, and the question is, what do we do with them? I well, think we them all in the sun. We have thousands of them. The United States has thousands of nuclear weapons. Um, yep. and they're and poised Russia and, and, poised and ready. yeah, yeah, poised and ready, poised and ready, poised, poison, poised and ready. But then again, even the dumbest ass sociopath would want to assured mutual destruction. I mean, come on, let's give us a break. I, I can't really say that because I do know people that I've heard them saying they've got weapons that can blow up the planet. And they'll do it. Just yeah, they do. They can do it. 
They've got weapons yeah. that'll crack the planet in half. But yeah. and they'll do it just to do it. And the yeah, hand, there are some. On the one hand, I'm surprised some some net hasn't already set something off. You know, some firecrackers off. I'm really surprised, you know, to find out well, Bin Laden's family owns some of the major tech companies in the United States. Did you know that the Bin Laden family? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they they, they got them out of here real quick. You know, there were no planes flying, but the Bin Laden family took off. Oh yeah, because they own some major five Fortune 500 companies here in the United States that are top secret that build weapons. And surveillance uh, equipment. Believe it or not, that <laughs> sounds completely crazy, but it's the truth. Well, uh, he was a CIA agent. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I can, and uh, you know, they used him as a dupe and, you know, yeah. well, as a boogeyman. And the old man they, what they always do to all of them that they use is like, oh, no, no, we got to kill you. Of course, I think he died you know, like before before they said they killed him, which they didn't. I because I, he had dialysis, and, you know, and you, you're yeah. not in a cave on a dialysis. No, no, there's no, no was way. New York. He was in New York at some high falutin tootin hospital under an assumed name with top secret people all around him. Give me yeah. a break. So was Saddam Hussein. Give me a break. Everybody's seen Saddam's double and triple. Everybody has. Even the dumbest of the dumb has seen Saddam's trip, uh, Saddam's double and Osama bin Laden's double. And everybody's, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. So we don't know. Well, even Hitler had doubles. So, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. We don't know what's going on with these guys. Hillary Clinton's got a double. We don't know yeah. what's going on with these people. We have no fucking clue what's going on with these people. Or even, or even clones. They might right. even be clones. Right. So, right, 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 right. That's where that five level really secret shit goes comes from. That's where that five yeah. level top secret thing comes from. But you know, well, as I sit here looking out at the sunshine, it doesn't seem so bad. But as I look on the internet and oh my god, it seems so bad, you know. And then, of course, you still have people on the Internet. I know you have those on the Internet you see playing the games. And we're the mafia. Who are you in my mafia? You know, uh, I mean, just people, I guess they just want to have fun. You know, they're not like us. They just want to have fun. They want to have a day full of fun. And that's all they want to do. And and there's other people that just post and 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 post some more. And I'm like, for what? Hello, I do the same thing, but for what? So I want more out of the internet. I want more out of social media. You've heard you've heard me say it a million times. I want more out of all of this. But what more can I get out of all of this? Well, the Top Gun 25, for one, that sounds so stupid and so corny. Uh, but that's what I want. I want the Top Gun 25. And by the way, we're moving closer and closer and closer to the Top Gun 25. I'm sure you've noticed some of the same people posting our shit. Yeah, I have noticed. And I have been getting some some people from your site coming over and friends, yeah. you know, following my pages. So, yeah, I, you know, it is, it is starting. And yeah. we can't down it, but because right. we are, you know, we are doing something. And we are getting closer. They might not be what we want, you know, right now, but everything starts off small before it turns into, a, you know, hopefully it'll turn into a big thing. And it may just evolve itself into the Top Gun 25 without us even having to call it the Top Gun 25. Yeah. So don't don't get too discouraged if today it doesn't look good because tomorrow you might get a hundred people join. That's not so, yeah. Yeah, I was just telling my producer to put some more Dr. Peppers in the freezer so they'll get cold. I don't drink I don't drink liquor anymore. I don't drink beer anymore. I don't do any kind of about fifteen years ago. Me too. I used to be a raging drunk. And, uh, and some people know me from when I used to drink and everything and oh well you're still that no, I gave that up. I, I cleaned myself up, got off the drugs, got off you know. 
clean myself up and try to lead a good life now. Yeah. <clears throat> because yeah. it wasn't doing me any good. It was actually tearing me down. No, hell no. It was tearing me down, too. It was tearing me down, too. It was, it was ridiculous. A lot of my headaches and problems from after I had the auto accident, you know, were because I was still drinking and uh, all that stuff. And then when I cleaned myself up, my seizures aren't as bad. Right. And I attribute that to the alcohol and the drugs and everything else I was on. And then when I clean myself up, I still have them because my brain is still injured. You know, it's never going to heal. It's never going to be the way I was before the accident. But mm -hmm. I've limited a lot of the input that hurt me. And, you know, and people, oh, well, you should do this. You should go to the doctor. Go to MCV. I went to MCV. I'm not going back to the CIA for them to do mind control and everything else on me. Fuck that. Right, right, I don't right. want to go to MCV anymore because they tried to kill me. And I'm not going to give them another chance to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The closest I get to that is biofeedback with the um, with the little uh, pins on the head, you know, that I go and I'm getting ready to go on the 24th and have uh, a session, which is pretty cool. You get to look at some beautiful pictures while they monitor your brain waves and it kind of uh kind of a cool experiment for some researcher like me it's yeah, almost like dialectic feedback uh, and, or biofeedback you know yeah i wouldn't mind doing that the, the only time yeah. i've had it was the uh, eeg where they were testing the for the seizures and stuff and they stick mm -hmm. a strobe light inches from your face and say don't look at the light now close your eyes now open right. your eyes and I always have a seizure from them things, and it's worse than torture for me. And I tell mm -hmm. them, eh. and they go, oh, well, your theta waves are, you know, all messed up. And it's like, so? What's that prove? You know, I, I got weird theta waves. Yeah. Theta, beta, gamma? Yeah. Well, you got the delta waves, the alpha waves, mm -hmm. the gamma ray waves, mm -hmm. the theta waves. And, you know, it's like, and my, just my like, brain doesn't respond as a seizure. God, so they, damn, they say, well, you're, you're not you're not having a seizure seizure, but you're convulsing, and you have everything but the brain activity of a seizure. So what do you call it? I've got uh, chronic post traumatic atypical migraines with syncope and psychogenic non epileptic seizures. Right. So, right. And they go, yeah. oh, well, we don't believe you. You're faking it. Well, yeah, the syncope, you fake it. The syncope is just an ectopic foci is all it is. The syncope is an ectopic foci like happens in the Purkinjic fibers or the sinoatrial node in the heart going down into the ventricles in the atrium, which causes an ectopic foci, which causes an abnormal beat in the normal sinus rhythm. But, yeah, those beta, theta, and alpha waves can definitely tell what's going on in specific parts of the brain area and allow them to be able to make a better diagnosis as to what's wrong. That science is still pretty much bunk. They don't really fully understand the waves yet in all of their different forms. There's like five levels of waves in the brain. Mm -hmm. And they've yet to understand how that articulates, how that all goes together. But they're coming closer. Neurology is really taken off. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, the, I, I gave up on all the doctors and the neurologists because all the neurologists told me, oh, well, we can give you these drugs. And all they want to do, we'll give you drugs. I don't want your drugs. They make me sick. They make, you know, if you can find something that works that I can tolerate, great. But I'm not going to go through the whole pharmacy to find that one drug you know, and get killed by something that I don't need. I'm just saying uh, that neurology itself has really taken off yeah. in, in just stride, great strides, massive strides over the last uh, two years. Just, just unbelievable strides. Uh, damn, my numbers are going up, Glenn. What's going? What did you do? What did you do? I've been sharing your stuff. 
I've been sharing your stuff. Did you do your magic or something? My post yeah. reach is up to five hundred all of a sudden. Yeah, I've been I've been pushing all the stuff that you put out. So Shit. yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't see it. My my numbers, you know, they're staying. They they have leveled off. But mine are about where yours is right now because I just started saying, okay, I'm going to share this stuff, and I don't know who looks at it, but you know, here it goes, and just put it out there. Well, I know who looks at my shit, and I tell you what, I know him by first name. And um, there's there's a few faithful people out there, like I said, on the Top Gun 25. There's a few faithful people working with us, Glenn. They're working yeah. with us. And, and, and they're, they're sharing stuff, too. So, yeah. they, they, you know, the more people start sharing, the more it'll grow. And, and the numbers will show it because it's... If your numbers don't go up, you're doing something wrong. If they knock you down, your numbers keep going up, and they knock you down, and your numbers keep going up. The other day, they don't like started, that. The other day, you made a good comment about the numbers go up, and you get all excited, and then they bottom out, and then they go up again, and then they bottom out, and then they go up again. <laughs> yeah, and if they keep going up and going, you know, they drive you down, and you keep going up, you're doing something. If they drive right. you down and, you do, and they don't go up, you know that, well, it's time to give up. <laughs> right, 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 right. Mine are going up again. And by the way, the Northwest Mental Health Connection page is looking really good. Our numbers are up. Our analytics are up. Mary's getting uh, -uh. Mary's getting ready to make you an admin on the Northwest Administrative page here in just a second. She's on her way right now. She had to upgrade Windows uh, to last yeah, day. I've got to redo my computer. Uh, that well, they hacked me and I'm running as a ghost and I can only do a tiny little bit as a ghost. Can't do any production. Yeah. I, I can get on the internet. That's all I can do is my ghost and people. Oh, we used to do this. Oh, you should. Do I don't have a working computer. Once I make my computer work again, they'll hack me again and knock me out again. I mean, it's. I, I reset my computer redo my computer probably about seven times a year. I had to reinstall the operating system because they hack into me. And I mean, if they don't total my computer, I mean, they've done, I've lost two computers because of them hacking me. We've lost two. And we've lost so two. It's like, and I don't have any, you know, I have no money anymore to spend on another computer. The one I'm working on now, I call Franken computer because it's like six different computer pieces put together as a computer. Huh. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm on. But, but I keep going. You know, I, I don't let them keep me down too long. Yeah, I'm on your page now, looking at all your memes. Tired of being called a Muslim. We are the Seven Eleven guys, not the Nine Eleven guys. Yeah, that's kind of rough. That's kind of rough. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> You're gonna take a lot of flack for that shit from the feminists. I always the, do. I always feminazis. do. They, the feminist feminazis go after me constantly. I posted one about Bruce Jenner, and oh my god, they started reporting my page so hard that the algorithm kicked in, and they go, "Why can't we block you?" I said, "Because you're stupid. You tried to." You know, you flooded my flooded the reports. You know, so of course they're not going to delete it. You dumbasses. Of course not. You got to know how it works. I love when people attack me. That means my page is doing something. Okay, David, what's going on with David? Wait a minute, we got somebody coming on here. A star, one of our stars. David Johnson's coming on from MIGTO, the big wig at MIGTO. Oh my God, he, I can't believe this. The man himself is coming on. Okay, well, this ought to be interesting. Let me tell you right now. I'm a moderator over at MIGTO Worldwide, and I've been going around and around and around with my fans about why am I a member of MIGTO, and then I recently told them I was getting out of MIGTO because they hate women, and these young boys need to grow up and get a mommy uh, and I got in trouble for that with the guys over at MIGTO. They all attacked me. I can show you the thread. I saved it no, for I, you. I, I've, like, seen, 
I, I, I saw the I saw some of the posts. Yeah, man, I was giving them hell. And then I finally <laughs> told them it was a sociological experiment that I was doing. And David Johnson comes on and says, Damn, dude, you are slick. You are slick. What in the hell are you doing? And I said, well, it's just, you know, I'm bored, and I wanted to shake things up over there at MGTO. I wanted to really, really shake shit up. I wanted to shake these boys up, and I did. Boy, I got their feathers riled, man. <laughs> I tell you, they were riled up. And, um, yeah. yeah, man, we are waiting for you uh, okay uh but yeah those guys at migto need a mommy i don't you know talking about relationships i mean come on dude let's don't brutalize women there's no need to brutalize women come on there's no need to hate women uh jeez you know <laughs> I had women chasing me my whole life, and I told those guys at Micto, I said, I never paid for a thing in my dating days, man. I had women chasing me from every corner of the earth. I was driving a new car every single day, had three or $4,000 in my pocket, brand new suit fitted from the tailor, and it was all paid for by the women. And I had dinner every night at a different house or a different hotel. And I had all my women together in one place, and we partied together, and, oh, it just pissed them off to the max. They couldn't well, stand yeah. to hear that. Most of them. I find out a lot of these these kids, I'll call them that, because they're all under 30. You know? Yeah. And it's like all these under 30 people telling me what happened, and you know, I was in the army before they were born. Don't tell yeah. me what the hell went on during the sixties, seventies, and eighties yeah, when you I'm, weren't born yeah. until the nineties. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous, and a lot of them are still virgins and never had a woman, and you well, know, these guys, and they act like asses to the right. women. You're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Right, and they hate women, and they don't understand women. It's not that they hate yeah. women. It's that they don't understand what a woman is about. They don't understand what what how women tick. What makes women tick? I mean, I'm. And they the all say, "Go ahead." No, they all. They also don't have never had a real relationship with a woman. Never. They, never, know, never. Never. They they no they play around. their players. They do this and that and the other. And then oh, it's the women. It's the women. It's the women. no. It's your dumbass. You know. If every woman that every time you see somebody, you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. So, you know. Yeah. Oh. I will say I've had my share of hell, uh, hell, fire, and brimstone relationships. Um, oh, yeah. But, but, but that was, that was, different that was uh that was after my player days kind of between my player days uh i got serious and had kids and that's what fucked everything up is having kids you know and yeah, uh they do that <laughs> yeah, it fucks everything up you know and uh we were free and easy and clear and wonderful and then all of a sudden these screaming little shits come along and everything goes to fucking hell and um, yeah. that's the way it is. That's the way it is, you know. Uh, I'm not a daddy that's going to be holding the baby all the time and going goo goo dad dad pee pee doo doo. I'm the daddy that's out hunting. You know, I'm the hunter. She's mm -hmm. the gatherer. You know, I'm the hunter. I don't want to hold kids, but just maybe every now and then, you know, just uh, whatever. You know, when I'm watching TV, maybe ten or twelve minutes. But I'm the hunter. I'm the hunter. I'm not the I'm not the female. You know, and boy, I'm gonna get a lot of emails. We're gonna get a lot of emails. Oh, they're gonna be terrible. Oh my god. Oh my yeah. god. You know. All the feminazis are gonna come after you. Man. But men should be men should be men today, dude. Where are all the men at? Yeah. The fuck. You and I and our generation are still men mostly. 
Uh, but this younger yeah. generation, these millennials, uh, you can't, they're all, you know, well, we're going to be feminine and we're going, we got to be sensitive and we got to hide in our safe spaces. And yeah. fuck you. You know, shit, 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 shit. You know, that's just ridiculous. All that's just silliness. Yeah. Oh, well, I need my safe space. We'll go into the safe space, lock it up, seal it up airtight, and shut the fuck up. You know? Don't be safe. <laughs> uh, women, I've never chased women. Never in my life have I ever chased a woman. And that's okay. They always chase me. They always wanted a piece of this. Because I'm tall and I look like the Marlboro Man. I weigh 235 pounds. I'm six foot four. I look kind of rough and rugged. You've seen my picture on uh, mm -hmm. on the internet. And the women have always chased me. They've always wanted a piece of this. Because I play guitar. I sing. I write poetry. I write articles. I'm always doing something. I'm always inventing something. I'm always creating something. I'm always on the go. And they want that. Women want that. Women don't want to be with some old bored fat ass sitting on the couch eating potato chips all day. Well, I I know a few that are like that do want that. <laughs> so I can't say women don't want that. But well, yeah, I, for the most part, I, I, for the I, most I, part, they want the man to be a man. You know, they don't want to be dating their girlfriend. Eh. Right. I mean, right. You know. Right. They hang out with their girlfriends and they want a man in bed. And if you, you know, it's, uh, -uh it ain't that way anymore. You know? Well, even I, I, I can't really say much. I've been married 22 years, so I, I got a good even, woman. Even if you are at home eating potato chips, it doesn't matter. You still got to be a man. They like men. As long as you're a man, you're going to be okay. Yeah, you're going to be okay. But, but when your generation of special snowflakes, <laughs> yeah, they act like little girls with pussies. They need pussies. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your little pussy hat and march in stupid marches and go away. Yeah. Yeah. You're not doing anything important. For sure. For sure. For sure. Other than destroying our society. And. I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's just another form of the way to control us. And well, you know, you can another get... way to divide us because we're fighting them and, you know, they don't care. They're just going to keep doing it. And we're like, oh, well, we think everybody's like us and they're not. And, you know, you, well, you, know you might care, that? but the next person doesn't. So. What you and I are saying right now could get us in some kind of jail somewhere. Oh, I don't care. I'll say it anyway. Uh, no, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying how stupid the world is. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. They go, oh, well. So well we, we, we considered violence and hate, hate speech, hate speech. That's what it's become. Everything's hate speech anymore if you go against somebody. Yeah. So. That's the damn that's truth. Why I always make sure, that's why I always make sure I got documentation and. And, you know, if I don't have the documents to back it up, I don't say it. If I have the documents to back it up, I'll stand on it with my life, you know? We go off air at 8 Pacific. He says he's hurrying. Okay, hurry, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. I think, I don't know what he wants to talk about, MGTO or something tonight. Yeah, I told him that. Um, yeah, I don't know what he wants to talk about. I think he may want to talk about me shaking up MGTO over there the other day. Boy, I shook the shit out of their tree, I tell you right now. Um, yeah, I feel a little bit better about um, about Facebook today. I'm here now. Well, where are you, <laughs> David? I don't see you. I do not see you on my board, my friend. When you're in, just say hello. Good. Hello? Hey, hello? David. Yeah. What's up, David? Not too much. How about you? Turn your volume up a little bit, dude. How you doing, man? Okay. I think I, uh, can you hear me better now a little bit? A little better? 
Yeah, if you speak up, I can. Yeah, you're on the line with me and Glenn Sutphin, my co-host. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. Talking about hate speech, I think. Uh, just uh, today, they somebody found some racist, quote unquote, racist, uh, quote unquote, hate speech um, on a bus shelter written in permanent ink on the bus shelter. <laughs> Yeah, I was just talking about there's a jail somewhere for me and Glenn, you know, because we're talking about women, and we're talking pretty rough about women, you know, and I said there's probably some feminazis out there that are going to try to burn the station down or something or put a bomb somewhere. I mean, they're all just really listening all the time, you know, well, and I had, uh, had somebody vandalize my car uh, almost three years ago, and they vandalized it pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. That was well. I'm still, I still think those guys over there need to grow up a lot. I mean, you know, I just there's a lot of 30s. Uh, Glenn was mentioning the millennials, I guess you call them, out of the Gen X, and then the millennials. A lot of millennials over there have never had a real relationship with a woman, and so how would they know what that looked like? You know, I've had. Yeah. I've had lots and lots of relationships with all kinds of women from every cu every corner of the globe. And I can tell you that women are different. Every woman is different. And uh, you can't lump women all into one bunch of coconuts. You know what I mean? Of course not. But you can make and generalizations, though. Well, yeah, you can get in trouble making generalizations. I'm good at generalizations, and believe me, I try to get away from them. I've tried to stop making generalizations because that's really not a good thing to do. You should take every woman on an individual case, even okay. though women share – they share culture, they share psychology, and they share psychosis, and they share – uh, media input, and they share indoctrination and certain programming, you still have to take each woman on an individual case basis, I believe, in order to get the full story. Um, and I also believe that men, um, uh, you know, you have to train women. Uh, that's why I like them young, you know, you have to train women. You can train them up if you get them young, 19, yeah. 20 years old. You can train yeah. them if you're a man. If you're a man, you can train them. If you're a pussy, you can't. Yeah. You know. I'm one uh, of the Gen Xers. Well, I guess you could consider me a millennial. I was born in 1980, but uh, I, I think it's still considered Gen X. But anyway... It doesn't really matter, but, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of men out there that are very angry, and I think you're right. Uh, well, if you look at this, you know, if you back it up, back up with what, what you're saying with statistics, it shows that I think in Canada at least between so it's about 75 percent of males between the ages of 18 to 35 are not married. Right. What, what does that right. tell you? 75 75 percent. That's quite a bit. Well, I don't believe, you know, I don't believe in marriage. I think that's the most idiotic, stupid, foolish thing anybody could do on the planet is get married in the first place. Yeah. I mean, it is just fucking idiotic, idiotic, stupid, foolish. I have seen people when I did karaoke and I was a karaoke master and I did parties I used to see people spend fifteen, twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars on a wedding. I mean, that's just stupid. Just stupid. Jump over a fucking brimstick, jump in the pool, and go fuck. And forget it. <laughs> I mean, it's just stupid to get married. Well, mar marriage was instituted by the government, and you know now they're trying to destroy the families, and you know, as part. Uh, agenda 21 and they're destroying the families and you know I, I tell everybody i don't believe in the institution of marriage me and my wife have been together and it's not because of a government's piece of paper it's because we love each other and i don't consider myself married i'm still dating her you know and you that's know, another thing we have to get something straight here we have to get something straight here 
The family is an anomaly. The family is an anomaly. It's an experiment in chaos. Okay, we what we lack right now is the tribe tribal mentality. What we lack is the band mentality. What we lack is the chiefdom mentality. When we went to the state mentality and we talk about all this bullshit about family, 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 there is no fucking family. In order to have a family, you have to have a broad community base, and everybody has to participate, and everybody has to be involved, fully involved and engulfed in that idea of what family is. These new cultured idiots believe that a family is a man and a woman and a couple of kids. That is not a fucking family. Family is a community of people, a tribe of people, a band of people, a chiefdom of people, not a state of people. When you get to the state, you are talking about pure fucking chaos because there's no one there to help you. There's no one there to mentor with you. There's no one there to assist you. Okay, so we need to get this fucking straight. The family, the word family shouldn't even exist. Everybody should be pushing for community, community, community. Families cannot survive. Families cannot survive by themselves. They cannot. Even the, even the government and their henchmen economists classify families as households. Well, whatever the fuck that is. Whatever the fuck that is. What the fuck is a household? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's how they classify families, people that live in a house or an apartment or something. That's a family. What the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. You know, the reason the family is being destroyed today is because the family should not exist as it exists today. That's the reason it's being destroyed, because it has no power. There are a lot of people that are able to succeed in calling themselves a family if they have a couple of kids and a a spouse. They can succeed because they have wisdom, they have experience, they have energy, and they have compassion, and they have caring, and they have understanding. (coughs) But most people are not geared that way. Most people are carrying around a ton of fucking psychological baggage, a monkey on their back, and they can't handle being alone with a spouse all cooped up in a fucking apartment with two screaming fucking kids on welfare and the jobs lost and the cars broken and the goddamn porch is falling off. They can't, they can't, they can't deal with it. They can't deal with it, and the government knows this. The government knows this. Once we hit statehood, we fucked everything up. I'll shut up. I'm sorry. Y'all go ahead and talk. But once we hit statehood, we fucked everything up. No, I, I agree with you on that, because once they went to the states, and then you become a nation state. And, right. You know, and it becomes, it becomes, well, now we need a government, and the government can't handle a nation state. It can barely handle a state. You know? Right, right. And then everybody becomes what? Divided. Depen- divided. Divided and dependent on that, that fake government to produce, you know, like you said, welfare, to take care of you. And, you know, right. you've got people on welfare that are like, well, I've got, got another it. kid, so that's more money. And it's, the, state, know, the state takes over your kids. The child care division takes over your children. The government takes over your food stamps. The government takes over your housing. The government gives you a clothing allowance. The government helps you with your vehicle. The government helps you get furniture for your fucking house because your own housing. What kind of life is that? What kind of fucking life is that? I don't have it. (laughs) I'm not allowed to have welfare. Uh, I've tried. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I, I can't get it because I had my workman's comp settlement. And they go, "Oh, you got money? Come in. Never mind." It's like, but I'm a low poverty wage. You know? Do you agree? Do you agree with me, David? Yeah, yeah, about the nation state thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, how? Yeah, how people. Is, well, I mean, how ahead. long is how long have nascent states been around? I mean, they've, they've been around for for hundreds of years. Six thousand years. Six thousand years. Yeah. More than that. Babylon yeah. was a nation state. Oh, oh, really, true, true nation states. I don't want to go into all of the complex history. True nation states, amalgamated states, have become around about 6,000 years. And that's a long time to develop a nation state that's going to take over the people's minds and rule the people, you know, rule the masses, rule the commoners. And that's really basically, there's no other way to live except to rule the commoners. There's no other way to run a state. There's no other way to run a state. You can't run a state by allowing people to have power. You just can't do it. It doesn't work. It won't work. You can't allow a bunch of uneducated idiots to have power. Because, number one, nobody can agree on what the fuck is wrong. And number two, people are uneducated in civics. They don't understand how government works and all of the intricacies of government. So they don't know what kind of decisions need to be made, and they do not understand the reasons why those decisions might need to be made. So that's a problem. So this is why we need a centralized, strong government, strong centralized government. The problem is we get people in there who become sociopathic and crazy and insane, and they want to do diabolical things as human beings do. This is a normal evolutionary uh, propagation, if you will. This is normal evolution of humanity. There's nothing strange going on here. I get so fucking sick and tired of hearing people say, oh, there's something strange going on here. The devil's taking over. People are devil worshiping. No, it's just common evolution. This is what happens when you have a nation state. This is what it looks like, folks. Get fucking used to it. This is what it looks like. You know, stop saying that the NWO did it. Oh, my God, the New World Order did it. The Cabal did it. The Statists did it. The Nationalists did it. The Conservatives did it. The, the Moderates did it. The Liberals did it. No, this is what happens. This is normal life. The sociopaths are always going to rise to the top. The strongest chiefdoms will always rise to the top, and the commoners will be underneath the chiefdoms. What do you all say about that? Well, also, too, everybody has their own agenda. You know, so that's another reason why it doesn't work, because this one wants to go left, that one wants to go right. And then you got some people go, I want to go straight ahead. And they can't decide, uh, they can't get together to order a pizza. I mean, come on. There's too many issues on the table. There's too many issues on the table. Thousands and thousands of issues are on the table. And people can barely, barely put food on their own table. And we've got thousands and thousands of very important issues on the table. How do you expect people to come out and be self-empowered and become a part of the system when they're too busy trying to put food on the table and feed the baby formula and fix the car that's broken and making yeah. $9 an hour and the government's taking 50% of that. How can you expect people to be a part of this republic, this democracy, this kleptocracy? David. Yeah, I agree. People are too busy. And, you know, people have too much time on their hands. Relationship, my ass. People get together and they have way too much fucking time on their hands. They don't have to draw water out of the well. They don't have to milk the cow. They don't have to go gather the hen eggs. They don't have to drive a four-team of mules like I used to do. 
They don't have to haul hay into the barn at night for the cows. They don't have to get up in the morning and put the cows out, put the horses out. They don't have to do any chores. They don't have to do shit. So they're lazy fucks. They're lazy, no good for nothing fucks. And then they and get they, arguments and they can't get along. Well, hello, empty head motherfucker. And then they rely on government to solve all their other problems. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's chaos. When couples get together on the farms and ranches and they run the horses and run the cattle and they gather the eggs in, they milk the cows. They do all of the things that people do. They tend the garden. They draw water out of the well. They're breathing the fresh, clean air. They're having great sex. They're working hard every day. They've got goals and objectives. They've got focus. That's what makes for a good relationship, my friends. And this is what makes good talk radio tonight. That's what makes good relationships. Stay busy. Stay focused. Find something to fuck to do. Don't you all agree? Yeah. I mean, when we were living as, you know, on the farms and out in the rural areas, there weren't that many problems. And then were, then big cities came up and they started growing and we started seeing a lot of the problems. And then they started psychologically engineering people's brains and stuff and dumbed them down because, oh, the government gives you everything. And we got away from the agriculture and I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, what are we going to do, honey? Go to a $17 movie tonight when we can't even afford milk for the baby? What do you want to do? Go to Taco Bell? Hey, you want to go to Long John Silver's? Why don't we go to KFC, man, and have some of that fat leg stuff? I mean, come on, that's not a fucking life. That's not a fucking life. There's no life in that. And then let's go back home to the cage. Let's go back home to the cage. That Turn is on the not... TV. Yeah. 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 That's not a life. Come on, guys, get with me here. That is not a life. There's something wrong with this fucking picture. There's something wrong with this whole fucking picture. We've all been herded into these fucking cages, these fucking corrals. We've been put in these in this concrete jungle, locked up in these little cubicles, and we call this family. We call this community. My ass. My ass. Your your other We're, guest does he, does your other guest does he know what MGTOW is? Yeah, I, I've seen it. I, I saw the conversations going on. He's been monitoring my little sociological experiments. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a good thing he did, but maybe a, maybe a little bit too heavy at times, but uh, it worked. Hey, well, sometimes you need a heavy. You need it heavy to break things up and start. I knew talking. being sixty years old and being around the world a couple of times being around the block a couple of times, I knew how heavy to go because I didn't give a shit. If I gave a shit, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. But I didn't give a shit. I don't give a shit what these guys think about me. I don't need MGTO. I don't need anything. But I love MGTO, and I love you, David. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity you've given me. But those guys needed to be shook up. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, that's why we try to we, we try to filter the people that come into the group because we were finding too many too many too much echo chamber going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe the 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 one guy that I let in his post earlier, the nude ladies, which were pretty pretty sexy, really. The one with the bay in the bathtub with the nipples sticking up. Oh yeah. I let, yeah, yeah. And, I let, yeah. and one of the guys said. Oh man, this is great beat off material. <laughs> and I'm like, these guys are so fucking mature, man. This is great beat off material, man. <laughs> oh, shit. You're always looking for something to fat to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I didn't know whether to let that one in or not, but I made the I flipped the coin and went ahead and let it in because it was pretty good. Some pretty hot women. Uh, no, nah, not really hot. Kind of dumpy, but they weren't nude until you get to the very end, and then there's a girl giving some guy a blowjob after you scroll all the way through the nudies, the heart partial nudies. There's a guy getting a blowjob. So big deal. Whatever. They won't shut us down for that, I don't think. Well, well David, how long, private group and, uh, David, how long have you had MGTOW? Three years. Three years? It's the longest, it's the longest MGTOW group uh, in existence, as far as I know. In Facebook, anyway. Wow. That's, that's, that's because we manage it well, because if we don't, then there's going to be... They don't, the, the, the group will, will get shut down. How? Facebook will shut it down because there's too many. They let in a lot of other Facebook groups. The the content is just out is just out of control. People posting whatever they want. They start getting into fights. They start reporting reporting posts to Facebook, and then they close the group down. Yeah, I'm surprised. That happens a lot. I'm surprised y'all don't have more porn on your page. Porn well, Facebook sometimes. Porn is a good what? community standard. Well, I'm talking about even soft porn, like I put up today. That was soft porn. Well, Facebook is supposed to have a a DNA filter that they, if it's flagged once, the picture it's supposed to go into this machine, and then you can never upload it again to Facebook. But and eh, uh, you know, knowing what I know, it doesn't work. I've seen it too much. They just say that for effect, and I've seen the same picture posted. There's been I've reported pictures and seen them posted other places. So their excuse that they have photo DNA, nah, it doesn't work. They need to tweak it then. But that, you know, I, th- I think um, I think David, you need more real men in that group. I think I don't know how many real men. You probably do know how many real men are in that group. But I think you need more real men in that group. And by God, what's wrong with having real men in that group anyway? I mean, uh, am I implying that there are pussies in that group? I guess yes, I am, and to some degree. Uh, am I implying that there are a bunch of little imbecile millennials in there who don't know their fucking ass from a hole in the ground? Yes, I guess so, in a way. Uh, but you need more real men in there who have been around the block, and they really know how to handle women. They really know how to treat women, and, and they, they really know how to talk about women. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It pisses the other guys off to hear good stories about men and women. Have you noticed that? Yeah, because they ain't getting any themselves. So, of course, it pisses people off to hear about it. I don't know what the reason is, but I know that it pisses them off to hear me talk about my days when I didn't pay for anything and women were always chasing me, and that's the truth. All of those stories are the truth. I never paid for a damn dinner in my life. They always paid for my dinner and everything that I owned and had. And those guys Uh couldn't take it. They just couldn't fucking take it. Or they couldn't believe it. What do you think, David? They couldn't believe it? You think they just couldn't believe that I had that kind of lifestyle? Uh, I think some could, but in general, no. They probably don't believe it because they they never they never experienced anything like that before. And, uh, yeah. Another thing too is they've been conditioned not to because they've never had it, and they're conditioned to say all oh, this is wrong. People don't live this way, and you know you start. You go against their narrative in their brain, and then a cognitive dissonance sets in, and then, ah, the walls go up, and they don't want to hear it anymore, so they get defensive. And there is nothing wrong with a woman taking care of a man. There is nothing in the world wrong with a woman taking care of a man. Nothing. Tell me one thing that's wrong with that, guys. Tell me one thing 
that's wrong with a guy walking around with two or three thousand dollars in his pocket all day long, every single day, driving a brand new fucking car every fucking day, a different car, and having all of your women come together on Friday and Saturday night and party together? What's wrong with that? Nothing. You know, if it works, go for it. It's not a damn thing wrong with that. Not a damn thing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And anybody that would down something like that is just jealous as shit, burning jealous. You know. Yeah, yeah. But you've really got to have something going for you, baby, to get that kind of pussy. You've really got to have something going for you. You can't be a... You can't be a wallflower and get that kind of pussy. And you can't be a wimp and bring those women together in the same fucking room together and be a wimp. You've got to be a commando. You've got to be a tall commando. You've got to be a strong chiefdom. That's what chiefdoms do. That's what chiefdoms do. Um... I would be doing that right now if I wasn't so sick. And if I didn't have Mary, my 20-year friend and soulmate, I would be living high off the hog, baby, and I wouldn't be fucking around with women with two or $3,000 in the bank. I'd be fucking around with millionaires. I wouldn't be running around with two or three grand in my pocket. I'd be running around with two or three hundred grand in my pocket. And you wouldn't be on Fedbook. And I would not be on Facebook. <laughs> Hell to the no. We used to go out and spend seven or eight thousand dollars every night partying. Yacht to yacht to jet to jet. Lear jet to lear jet, yacht to yacht. That's the life. That's the life. That's the life. And I could still do that now. It would take me about six months to get back in the groove, but I could do it. You know where you start? Y'all want to know a secret? Where do you start? If you had to go out and start doing that, and I gave you a task, where would you go to start living that kind of lifestyle? I don't know because I've been domesticated. The arts community. You go and join okay. I can the see that. arts community. And you start going to art openings every single night. And you meet the rich women, baby. And you get the phone numbers and you start making the hookups, start making the connections. And before you know it, you're rolling in dough. Yeah. So, I should be yeah, charging. You got go to you gotta go where the action is. You have to go where the money is. You're not going to find money in a rat hole. You've got to go where the money is being delivered, being used. And you've got to go where women are that have money and okay. education. How, how do you and explain? Huh? If you look at Google Trends, Google Trends points out the incidence of searches increasing uh, for the keyword MGTOW in the past uh, 10 years, and it has skyrocketed in the last year. Yeah. I did that the other day when you told me about it. Yep. It's amazing. You, you I, just don't see where you're, I just don't see where you're going with MGTOW. I don't, I don't get it. I love it over there for some stupid reason. But I don't see where you're going with MGTOW. I just don't see where it's going. It's the same old fucking shit. Every other fucking post no, man, is it's primarily it, It's primarily networking with other guys. We, so we can all sit around and jack each other off or what? No. You can make friends with, with other guys in other cities. I've already done that. I've made, uh, I've made pretty close uh, friendships with, with guys in MGTOW already. I met uh, one guy in Guatemala, and I met him again in Vietnam. And I talk to uh, some of them on a regular basis on, on the phone. So it's not a gay thing or anything like that. It's just uh, it's, it's a brotherhood. So that's primarily what it's about. And 
you know, it's a place for, for, for guys to vent. You see a lot of venting going on, and that's okay, but we're trying to force guys who vent into trying to turn it into a positive thing. Well, as long as they like my stories about my women, I'm okay over there. As long as they like my stories. I have my life. I can't be them. I have to be me, and they can't be me. They have to be them, and we have to be able to come together and be our, you know, be ourselves with each other and respect each other's lifestyles. That's just my lifestyle. That's just the way I've always been, you know. And some guy made a smart-ass remark over there the other day about, oh, well, you've been with Mary because she's your caregiver. She's getting paid for being with you. That's what the bitch is doing. And that was just rude as shit. She was with me 15 years before she started getting paid to be a caregiver for me for a little $220 a month. Yeah. But you do see where we're going with Big Cow, right? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. We, we I always did. Well, we're networking, and, and you're spreading the word of MGTOW on your radio show, and especially when you get your radio show back up and running. Yeah, when I go back on the 24, man, we have a 20, we're in 26 countries, baby. Wow, man, yeah. Um, man, yeah, I'm spreading the word at MGTOW. Bad publicity is good publicity. You know, any publicity is good publicity. Uh, yeah. People come just to hear me talk about it, negative, pro, or con. They come and hear me talk about it. They love to hear me talk about these subjects, pro and con. I always deliver both sides of the coin. I like MGTO. I feel very comfortable. Well, no, I don't anymore. I need to get back over there and talk to some of the guys. And I had a bunch on my side, by the way, when that thread started. I had a bunch of guys on my side. So that's good. That's a good thing. Yep. They did. They didn't all dislike me, but uh, that started out as a real thing. I was leaving MIGTO. That started out as a real thing, and then it turned into a sociological experiment. Oh. Once I got into it and I started seeing the threads start popping, 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 I said, hell, this is a sociologist's dream. Fuck. Yeah. I'll just see what I'll see how far I can carry this shit, you know? Well, you bring up a good point about Fedbook. That's all Fedbook is, is a sociologist's dream, because look at what they do with everybody. They get, get you divided. They... You know, they do thought experiments on you and the icons mm -hmm. at the bottom where you like you know, or you frown it. And they, they monitor this stuff. And, you know, yeah. it's associated, you know, an experiment on the human race. Oh, yeah. All over the world. All over the world. Mm -hmm. What do we have now? 2.5 billion people on the computer? More than that. I forget the numbers. I no, know. it's not more than that. that. I don't think so. Maybe 3 billion. Maybe. I doubt it. Very seriously. There's 2 or 2.5 billion people on Facebook. That's what I was trying to ascertain. Facebook. It's 2.5 billion. Yeah. Well, the value set goes on the computer. Uh, there's more computers than that. Yeah. But. But on Fedbook, yeah, it's about 2.5. I I'd like to 2.5 yeah. to 3. But then I, also, too, you got to count the bots and everything else in that, too. So. And the crawlers and the crawlers, the bots. I'd like to see a survey on how many people are not on Facebook and who refuse to go on Facebook for various reasons. I would love to see a survey on that done. There may be one out there. That we don't check. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see how many people have just dissed Facebook altogether, just ditched it altogether, just for various reasons. And I would like to see how their life has changed and what they're doing now and to fill all that fucking time up. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that I spend um, 
sometimes 18 hours a day on Facebook, but I have 26 platforms to work, and I'm here to work. I'm here to work. I'm not here to fucking play about who's in my mafia and Petville and Farmville and all this other shit. I'm here to work. You know, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it sometimes 24 hours a day. So, and, oh. you know, and I, I spreading the word and getting my stuff out there. Yeah. But, but sometimes I do play a game once in a while just to get away from all the shit I put out. I would love to get uh, autopilot uh, for a Cessna 182. I fly. I used to fly. And I would love to get that, you know, it's fairly expensive, the one that I want for Cessna 182. And I'd love to get the joystick and the whole thing. I think that that's expensive, though. And I don't know if my computer could handle it. I'm running off of an older computer. Running on Windows 10, which I swore I'd never go to. Everybody and their dog swore they'd never go to Windows 10, and now everybody's on Windows 10. Well, they gave it away for free, and then now is you know they can control your computer through it. And of course, they gave it away for free. Oh hell yeah! They're watching us now. They're I'm, listening to us now. I'm watching. I've got Windows 10 on the editing deck, and I got Linux on the one I surfed with. I used to use Linux. I used to love Linux. It's kind of hard to get used to. Yeah, well, I use Zoran Linux, and yeah. it's almost it's almost exactly like Windows. So I recommend Zoran Linux for everybody. If you're cool. tired of Windows, go to Zoran Linux. Plus, it allows you to run it off of USB, so they can't hack you. So, so David, what do you think about the hundred fucking genders we have to deal with now? I think it's. Mm, out absurd. I think it's mm, um, I'm trying to put my thoughts into words, but it's yeah, basically it's it's absurd. Uh, <laughs> it, it has no place in it's in a civilized society. No, it does not have a place in a civilized society. Um, it's also meant to divide us up, too. I mean, because, you know, the more you break it up, the more you get diverse and everybody has everything, and it pulls us farther and farther away from unity, being together and being coherent as a group. Yeah. And what do you think, David, about the new surgical procedures for your doggies and kitty cats where you can have them transgender now and sex change? I did not hear about that, and I'm I'm shocked. Yes, you can now take your dog to the vet, and there are specialists doing it all over the world. And if your doggy is feeling a little feminine, you can have a sex change with your dog or your cat. That's the first time I've heard about it. It's absurd, don't you think? Very absurd. Uh, yeah, I think it continues is going to be problems, major major problems. What kind of problems do you foresee? I think it's part of a past that we're going to where there's going to be mass confusion. People are not going to know who they are. Uh, it's, it's happening already. And it's going to bring, it's going to coincide with genetic engineering of of, uh, of uh, fetuses. Uh huh. Uh huh. I agree. I agree. I agree. And life will be even more of a commodity than it is now. It's not going to be a nice time. It's not going to be a nice time at all. Have you ever seen the film Gattaca? The what? film. It's called Gattaca. It came out 20 years ago already. What is it about? Uh, a future dystopian world where genetic modification um, has created uh, two classes of people. Invalids and I forget what the 
basically basically there's regular people that are not genetically modified, and then there's people that are. And the ones that are genetically modified are the ones going out to the moon. They're going out to planets. They're they're being sent on these crazy missions to do like you know they're basically like gods. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's basically what we're we're moving to, and then they're going to do gene splicing. I mean, they're already growing humans in, you know, tubes and tanks. So, you know, and chimeras where they're breeding different things like spider monkeys and goats together, and spiders and stuff. Goats. I mean, it's ridiculous stuff they're doing, and a lot of it's not even reported. I mean, you got to go digging to find this stuff. At one of the universities, they've got a human brain splice flying us an F-16 laying on a countertop. Have you heard about that one? No. Well, they've been they've been putting uh, rat brains on computer chips, integrating them and yep. controlling yep. controlling yep. stuff with them, and yep. connecting four brains together by chip. And you know a high a, a real hive mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're heading towards the Borg, people. Yeah, we are. By 2027, we are. And then by, by 2045, 20... we're supposed to be. 2045 initiative is nothing but that transhumanist, where you know your com- your computer, you don't even. Your computer is inside of you. I don't want a computer inside of me. It don't work outside of me. So, I don't think I would want to have a computer hooked up in my brain. But then here I am talking on a cell phone. So, you know. So you've got a computer already, hooked up to your brain. Yeah. So we got a computer hooked up to my brain already externally. So, you know. It's, and that's the way they're going to push it. Well, you're using your cell phone now. Wouldn't it be great if you can just think it? I can already hear people's thoughts. I don't want that in my brain electronically when it's bugging me normally. Mm-hmm. So, no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are Alternative Public Radio International. I'm on with my good friend David Johnson with MGTOW and uh, men going their own way. And Glenn Sutzman, my co-host tonight and my good friend on Facebook, um, I want to give a shout-out to Charles Stecker out there and Lee Michael, Amanda Jackson, Roseanne Cassidy, Stefano Catalino, Thomas Schufert, Howard Graber, David Johnson's on with me tonight, and there's Glenn Sutzman on my list again, uh, Bruce Adams, Sherry Fickle, Dwayne Brothel, Tony Chester, and a whole bunch of other people uh, on my Top Gun 25 list out there. Thomas Shuford will be back with us on Wednesday night for Tom's Take, and I will be co-hosting with Tom Shuford, who ran for president of the United States, uh, incorporated, and uh, dropped out of the race to allow uh, Hillary Clinton to win, believe it or not, and she didn't, so... Tom and I have been going around and around and around with that, and I'm sure we'll be going around and around some more on Wednesday night. Be sure and tune in at 6 p.m. Pacific time for Tom's Take. Mr. Thomas Euford and I will be co-hosting. Guys, I want to thank you for being on tonight, and I want to let our audience know that we will be back up and running. I'm not going to promise you when. But it will be soon. We will be back on the 24-hour station. We miss it as much as you all do. And um, that way we will be able to do our new segments and our cut-ins and uh, all those kinds of special effects and just all kinds of great stuff on uh, Mixed Cloud and Samboard. So we will be back soon. And uh, I want to thank David and Glenn again. Can't wait to have you all back on. We will be back on... Uh, where are we here? It, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it is March the 16th, 2017 at 7.44 p.m. So if you were listening to this show any time after that, it is pre-recorded for your convenience. Um, spring has sprung here in the Northwest, and we are happy. Uh, we're not getting as much rain as we normally do here in the Northwest, 
We will be giving you all some shots of all the dead fish on the Pacific. We will be talking much more about Fukushima and Reactor 2 over the next few weeks. We'll be covering a lot of the top stories, so stay tuned. Uh, remember, whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, and enthusiastically act upon will come to pass. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, David. Yes. Thanks for having me on. See you all later. Bye-bye.